page 88. Can you eat more, please? It seems that food corporations have got it made. The US government helps pay for their raw materials. They make more selling, they make more money from selling food than farmers. But they have one big problem that limits their scales, the size of the human stomach. Unlike many other products, CDs, say, or, or books, there's a natural limit to how much food we each can consume without exploding. Try as we might, the average person can eat only about 1,500 pounds of food a year. The demand for food rises only as fast as the population grows. In the US, that's about 1% per year. This leaves food companies like General Mills with two choices. They can figure out how to get people to spend more money for the same amount of food, or they can get us to eat more food than we need. Which do they choose? Why both, of course. Processing food allows companies to charge more for it. Consumers will only pay so much for an ear of corn, but they can be convinced to pay a lot more for the same corn if it has been turned into a funny shape, sweetened or brightly colored. The industry calls this adding value. Added value can be anything. It might be the convenience of a dinner you just pop into the microwave, or it might be a feeling like this food product is good for me, or it might be that the food is fun to eat, like rigid potato chips or cereal bars. That's why food companies spend so much on advertising to convince us they really have added value to the corn and soybean. They also try to convince us that our, cor our corn or chicken or apple are better or worth more than those of another company. They don't want us to buy just any old chicken, but Tyson chicken or Purdue. They don't want us to buy any old oat cereal, but they want us to buy Cheerios. Companies can also try to convince us that their food is healthier, even a sort of medic medicine. We're used to having vitamins and minerals added to our food. Of course, manufacturers wouldn't need to add them if they hadn't been removed during processing. And some manufacturers are going even further than adding vitamins. One company called Tree Tops has developed a low, low moisture, naturally sweetened apple piece infused with red wine extract. Natural chemicals in red wine called Floridians are thought to fight cancer. So Treetop is adding value to an apple by injecting it with these Floridians from red wine. It seems that an old fashioned apple just isn't enough anymore. We need an apple that fights cancer. We need orange juice with calcium that builds stronger bones. We need cereal that keeps us from having heart attacks. Turn to page 91. Fat from corn. Can you eat more, please? Part two. Some food companies have been very successful at getting us to pay more for the same food. What about the other money-making schemes to get us to buy and eat more food than we need? How has that worked out? Well, let's see. Three of every five Americans are overweight. One of every five is obese. Among kids, it's almost as bad. 17% of kids ages six through 19 are obese. This is a giant public health problem, costing the healthcare system an estimated 90 billion a year. The disease formerly known as adult onset diabetes has had to be removed has had to be renamed to type two diabetes since it now occurs so frequently in children. The Center for Disease Control estimates that one in three American children born in 2000 will develop it. Diabetes can mean blindness, amputation, and early death. Because of diabetes, 
and all the other health problems caused by obesity. Kids in the US today may turn out to be the first group of Americans with lifespans that are shorter than their parents. To put it simply, Americans are getting fatter and it's killing us. You hear plenty of explanations for our expanding waistline. We sit all day at desks in schools or at work. Then we sit around all night watching television. We play video games instead of sports. Fast food advertising encourage us to eat supersized meals. It's, it's actually cheaper to eat high calorie fatty processed foods than whole foods. All these explanations are true, but they don't tell the whole story. Extra calories. Behind our epidemic of obesity lies a simple fact. When food is abundant and cheap, people will eat more of it. Since 1977, an American's average daily intake of calories has jumped by more than 10%. Since we aren't exercising more, the calories end up being stored away from fat cells in our bodies. Where did all these cheap calories come from? If you've read this so far, you already know the answer. Most of them come from cheap corn. In 1970, farmers in the United States have managed to produce 500 additional calories per person every day. The average person needs about 2000 calories a day, but the number varies greatly depending upon your age, size, and amount of exercise. Where are those extra calories going? Some are sold overseas. Some are turned into ethanol for our cars, but a lot of them are going into us. An awful lot of those extra corn calories are being eaten as high fructose corn syrup. Not surprisingly, HFCS is the leading source of sweetness in our diet. Turn to page 96. Supersize. Soda makers don't deserve credit for the innovation of supersizing. It belongs to a man named David Wallerson. In 1950, Wallerson's worked for a chain of movie theaters in Texas. Movie theaters make most of their profit from their snack counter, not from ticket sales. It was Wallerson's job to figure out how to sell more soda and popcorn. Wallerson tried everything he could think of, but found he simply couldn't get customers to buy more than one soda and one bag of popcorn. He thought he knew why. Going for seconds make people feel piggish. Wallerson discovered that people would buy more popcorn and soda, a lot more, as long as it came in a single giant serving. Thus was born the two quart bucket of popcorn and the 64 ounce Big Gulp. In 1968, Wallerson went to work for McDonald's, but trying as he might, he couldn't convince Ray Kroc, the company's founder, to try supersizing. If people want more fries, Kroc told him, they can buy two bags. Wallerson explained that McDonald's customer wouldn't want more, but didn't want to buy a second bag. They don't want to look like gluttons. Finally, Kroc gave in and approved supersizing portions. And what followed was a dramatic rise in sales. People had been holding back because they didn't want to seem greedy. Now Wallerson and McDonald's had figured out a way to make them feel okay about eating more. After all, it was still just one serving, even if it was twice the size. They had discovered the secret to expanding the supposedly fixed human stomach. One might think that people would stop eating and drinking those huge portions as soon as they felt full, but it turns out hunger doesn't work that way. Researchers have found that people and animals will eat up to 30% more if they're given larger portions. Our eating habits were found over millions of years of evolution. Early humans who lived by hunting and gathering didn't always have enough food. Our bodies tell us to eat more when we have the chance because hunger might be just around the corner. The problem is, that with mountains of cheap corn, hunger never comes, at least not for most Americans. 
In the same way, our built-in instinct tells us to eat lots of sugar and fat. Humans, like most other warm-blooded creatures, have a built-in sweet tooth. The taste of sweet or fat tells our body we're eating an energy-rich food. Our instinct is to eat as much of it as we can in case we can't find food tomorrow. Yet in nature, we would never find a fruit with anywhere near the amount of fructose in a soda. We would never find a piece of animal flesh with as much fat as the chicken nugget. You might see why processed foods is such a good way of getting people to eat more. Fast food chains have been able to build foods that push our evolutionary buttons. Huge amount of sweet and fats fool our instincts and we wind up eating much more than we should. Animal experts prove this is so. Rats presented with solution of pure sugar or tubs of pure lard will gorge themselves sick, cheap fat. Surprisingly, the health problem of eating too much hits poor people hardest. That's because if you count the calories, food loaded with sugar and fat are the cheapest foods in the market. A recent study showed this is true. In a typical supermarket, $1 can buy you 1,200 calories of potato chips and cookies. The same dollar can only buy you 250 calories of carrots and other whole vegetables. On the beverage aisle, you can buy 875 calories of soda for a dollar, but a dollar will only buy you 170 calories of a fruit juice from concentrate. These numbers show why people with limited money to spend on foods spend it on the cheapest calories they can find. It makes even more sense when you realize that those cheap calories reward our instinct for fat and sugar. King corn saw shoved the other plants and animals off the farm. Now it is winning out in the supermarket too. It is so cheap and comes in so many different forms. The other foods just can't compete. As we have seen, it has had a lot of help. The U.S. government spending taxpayer dollars helped pay farmers to grow corn and soybean, but not to grow carrots. That means the government helps pay for your soft drinks or cookies, but it won't help to pay for green vegetables. One part of the government puts out food pyramids telling you to eat more fruits and vegetables and fewer sweets. Meanwhile, another part of the government is making it cheaper for you to eat more sweets. The government says it wants you to eat healthy, then it makes sure the cheapest calories in the supermarket are the unhealthiest. Talk about a mixed message. The processed food industry has brought us corn in thousands of different forms. It's given us cheap corn sweeteners and hundreds of extra calories a day. It manages to confuse our instinct to get us to eat more food than we need. All of this is part of a bigger problem, not a new problem either. It's the problem of figuring out what we should and shouldn't eat. It boils down to this. A creature who can eat many different things. How do we know what's good to eat and what's not? That's an omnivore's dilemma. It's growing bigger every day. Turn back to page 97. Find the gray box. Supersized servings. Calories in a serving of McDonald's French fries. In 1960, it was 200. In 1970, it jumped to 320. Mid 90s, 4.50. Late 90s, 5.45. 2001, 6.10. 2009, 500. Although McDonald's ceased to call their servings supersized in 2004, our large soda is still at a hefty 32 ounce. That's about 370 calories. 16% of an average person's recommended daily calories. 7-Eleven convenience store still offers the 64 double gulp, which weighs in at an incredible 800 calories. So after two and a half double gulps, you've consumed an entire day's worth of calories in sweet liquefied corn. Page 